This is the uh, KPS 305D previewed in my last video, or at least a previous video. Uh, 0 to 30 volts, 0 to, two, to 5 amps. Uh, volts and amps, These this V and this A de designate these as voltage and ammeters. There's an LED here for constant voltage mode, and LED here for constant current. There's a course for each current and voltage and a fine. The fine is very fine. Now these banana posts are three-quarter inch so that any standard pair of banana jacks will fit. They fit nicely. They don't handle the recessed ones. And they don't have a hole in them for wire. Metal flange appears to be more than just a washer. You can see the caps screw off. That's why they provided this kind of connector. A spade lug. It's held together with eight screws. These are machine screws, not self-threading screws. They are uh, flanged with a the head has a flange built in, but it's not toothed, and the paint's not scratched. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning that is, unless one of these screws is actually fastened internally to a stud and has ground wire attached. I'm not sure how the the piece of metal I'm removing now gets a good earth ground. Now that is a self-tapping screw going into plastic. And there was one on the other side I didn't take note of at the time. Just lifts right, right off. And it's made out of magnetic aluminum. Drives the chassis and the case is aluminum. He must get special magnetized aluminum. Nothing really to see here. There's a nice aluminum plate, no fins, just a plate. This is the earthing wire. It's soldered onto here, which is not considered good practice. It's got a crimp terminal here, and it screws into what appears to be an aluminum stud. It's an expansion riveted to the plate. You see the plate mounting screws don't have internally toothed washers on them either. It doesn't appear that the... Now... It's very possible that all of this stuff becomes grounded. It's just that 
soldered connections fail in high current and these kind of connections can oxidize since they're not aluminum uh, and lose continuity over the years. Everything's contained on two circuit boards and they all have this Hamptech logo on them. So I don't think this is it is rebranded. Now Hamptech may rebrand it for other people, but I think your manufacturer of this must be Hamtech. Hamtech. There's three devices screwed to the uh, aluminum plate, and there is one, I believe it's a temperature sensor, and it's uh, the, the glue is not glued. I still got the uh, very, very runny heat paste. We have an internal fuse in the IEC connector. It's fastened down pretty well. I'm guessing this is a full wave rectifier. Filter capacitors. This is probably the uh, one or both of these are part of the uh, switching system into the transformer. You can see this white line going around here. I guess it goes down through the middle, straight through the middle of the transformers, around. So everything on this side of the line is considered line voltage or connected to line voltage. I think the thing to do now is put the case back on and hook it up to the dummy load. I've got the load set at 12 and 2. Now that's only uh, 24 watts. This thing should be good for 60 watts, but my load, the only one I have up on the bench right now, I think is are two 15 watt loads. I have them parallel, I have them set at 1 amp each. Well, one it's 1.1 and the other is 1. And this is 12 and that's 17, but that could be lead loss. Or, uh, I'm sorry, this is 12 and that's 1.7. I wouldn't be surprised if we have some lead loss. Let me check it with my... Uh, bench meter. Well, bench meter reads 11.938 and that's reading on the That's actually reading on the flanges. Eleven point nine three nine three eight. Not here. It's eleven point two six. So there's almost a hundredth or two hundred. Uh, I'm sorry. There's also tw almost twenty millivolts of drop. Eleven point nine 
last two digits are 94. And now out here, it's uh, 17. Out here, well, that's somewhat better. <laughs> And up at uh, dummy load, eleven point six. So these meters on the load are a little bit high. Either that or my bench meter is uniformly low. So we'll just let it set like that. And it's going to set like that for about five hours till I get back here. Well, I, I, this thing has been running the last time I checked was noon. It's now 7.30. The little supply is sitting here at 24 watts and it hasn't broken a sweat. Fan's not on. Because my big dummy load isn't available right now, I think this one will handle 30 watts. So I think I'll set this at 5 volts and 5 amps and let it run overnight. This is a little WampTech KPS 305D. Supposed to be good for 30 volts at 5 amps. Right now it's set about 5 volts and 5 amps. The electronic load has two channels. Bolts are indicated in yellow and current is in the uh, blue. They're both set in about two and a half amps. Just a tiny bit less. There's the other channel. This has been sitting here for almost 24 hours. 